How would you feel waking up in a world where humanity has splintered into multiple species, each evolving along a different path? No longer bound by the slow march of natural selection, we've embraced change on our own terms. Some have merged with machines, becoming hybrids of flesh and technology. They're faster, stronger, and more connected than ever. Integrated with AI, their thoughts and actions synchronized effortlessly with the digital world around them. Others have chosen a different path, rejecting this fusion with technology. They've stayed close to their biological roots, modifying their bodies only when necessary to survive in extreme environments, like the frozen moons of distant planets or the intense heat of artificial worlds orbiting close to stars. They adapt in ways nature never could, evolving rapidly, but always staying organic. As you observe this new world, where different forms of humanity coexist, you can't help but wonder, what if this isn't just our future? What if alien civilizations have already taken these steps, evolving beyond anything we can imagine? Perhaps somewhere, we are the ones lagging behind, as other species have long surpassed us by thousands, even millions of years. What if I told you that this isn't just science fiction? That somewhere out there, alien civilizations might have already surpassed us by thousands, maybe millions of years, and we're the ones lagging behind? How do advanced civilizations evolve over tens of thousands or even millions of years? This is a question that scientists ponder as they search for techno-signatures, signs of technology from other civilizations on distant planets. We already know that the longer a civilization lasts, the more likely we are to detect them. So understanding how these civilizations might develop over time could help us improve our search methods. But beyond knowing what to look for, what we really want to understand is what happens to a civilization after all that time. What are they capable of? What do they become? This is the same question Russian scientist Nikolai Kardashev asked himself back in 1964. His answer became the famous Kardashev scale. Kardashev was the first, but certainly not the last, to try and define the stages of a civilization's development. Kardashev's question can be asked in another way. What are the universal steps in a civilization's journey toward advanced technology? The idea is that most, if not all, civilizations would go through certain stages as they evolve, and some of these stages might be noticeable when we try to detect them. While Kardashev was mainly interested in finding signals from distant civilizations, his scale gave us a clear way to think about how they might develop. Kardashev's classification wasn't based on social systems or ethics, because predicting these aspects about alien civilizations is nearly impossible. Instead, he focused on energy, something central to anyone with a background in physics. Energy use could offer a universal framework for understanding a civilization's progress because building any society requires energy. Kardashev considered the different energy sources available to civilizations as they advanced and used this to create his scale. From Kardashev's point of view, there are three main levels, or types, of technological advancement based on how a civilization harnesses energy, a Type 1, Type 2, and a Type 3 civilization. A Type 1 civilization on the Kardashev scale would master the energy of its entire planet, harnessing power from the sun, oceans, and even the Earth's core through advanced technologies like solar farms, tidal energy, and geothermal systems. Fossil fuels would be obsolete, pollution eradicated, and the planet would run on limitless clean energy. They would also control weather systems, managing hurricanes, steering storms, and even generating rainfall to prevent droughts and stabilize agriculture, ensuring no food shortages. Communication and transportation would be revolutionized with global quantum networks, allowing instant communication and high-speed travel via maglev trains or space elevators. Cities would become interconnected mega-hubs, powered by renewable energy and highly efficient technologies. Political divisions would disappear in favor of global governance, as resources and energy would be abundant for all. Society would focus on improving life through breakthroughs in biotechnology, extending human lifespan, and eradicating disease. In this civilization, education and culture would thrive, with vast energy resources dedicated to exploring the frontiers of science, philosophy, and the arts. 
Space exploration would expand rapidly, with missions to other planets and colonies throughout the solar system. Environmental restoration would flourish, pollution would be eliminated, rainforests revitalized, and even extinct species could be brought back through genetic engineering. This society wouldn't just survive, but thrive, unifying humanity to reach its full potential on a global scale. The abilities of a Type 1 civilization, global energy control and planetary unity, might seem like the peak of progress, but it's only the beginning. A Type 2 civilization goes far beyond harnessing the full energy of their star. By building structures like Dyson spheres, they capture nearly all the sun's power, fueling technological advancements, space exploration, and terraforming planets. Their energy mastery would extend to all celestial bodies in their system, enabling colonies on moons and asteroids with ease. For them, space travel would be routine, as common as flying between cities today. They could construct megastructures like space elevators and mine resources from asteroids or gas giants, allowing them to expand without depleting their home planet. With near limitless energy, their reach would extend beyond their solar system, exploring distant stars in search of new resources. Astonishingly, they might even control their star, manipulating solar flares, stabilizing its energy, and preventing supernovas. With advanced technology, they could harness material from stars to fuel ambitious projects, even manipulating space-time with wormholes or faster-than-light travel. A Type II civilization wouldn't just thrive, they would reshape star systems and push the limits of what's possible, becoming cosmic engineers with endless potential. The leap from a Type I to a Type II civilization is immense, but even harnessing the full power of a star is only the beginning. A Type III civilization, however, commands the energy of an entire galaxy. With control over billions of stars, black holes, and neutron stars, their technological capabilities would seem almost incomprehensible to us. Dyson spheres could encircle many stars, creating vast energy networks across the galaxy. For them, stars are no longer distant giants. They are resources to control, harvest, or even move. Travel across the galaxy would be trivial with faster-than-light travel and wormholes making interstellar distances insignificant. Entire star systems could be rearranged and planets engineered to fit their needs. They might even control the life cycle of stars, accelerating their collapse or preventing their death, and harness energy from black holes to power vast computational networks. A Type III civilization could transcend biological form, merging life with technology, existing as digital or energy-based beings, Communication would be instant across the galaxy, with a vast network of interconnected minds. Their mastery over energy, space, and time would allow them to shape galaxies and perhaps even venture beyond. For them, the galaxy would be their domain and the universe their next frontier. With all the mind-blowing capabilities of a Type III civilization, you might think that this is the ultimate pinnacle of advancement. After all, they've mastered entire galaxies, harnessing energy from countless stars and reshaping the very fabric of space. Even Kardashev himself believed this was the limit. He proposed only three levels of civilization, confident that the energy of an entire galaxy would meet the needs of any intelligent life. But what if there's more? What if a civilization could move beyond controlling a single galaxy, expanding their influence to the very structure of the universe itself? A Type IV civilization wouldn't be content with harvesting energy from individual stars or galaxies. They would harness the energy of everything – galaxy clusters, intergalactic space, and perhaps even the mysterious dark matter and dark energy that make up most of the universe's mass. While Type III civilizations bend galaxies to their will, a Type IV civilization would take control of the fundamental forces that govern the cosmos. Imagine a civilization capable of influencing gravity manipulating the very expansion of the universe, and even altering the constants of physics to suit their needs. They would have access to the raw energy of black holes, neutron stars, and quantum fluctuations across space-time, using these forces to power technologies beyond our understanding. Travel would no longer be limited by the speed of light or even the restrictions of space-time. A Type IV civilization could fold space, creating shortcuts between distant points in the universe or even open gateways to entirely new dimensions. 
They would not only explore their universe, but might have the ability to create new universes altogether. The boundaries between universes could become their next frontier, allowing them to transcend the limits of our known cosmos. With such immense control over the universe's resources, a Type IV civilization would have the power to stop the death of stars, reverse entropy, and prevent the heat death of the universe. They might even have the capability to harness the energy of entire superclusters of galaxies, extracting power from the interaction of billions of galaxies to fuel their vast, incomprehensible projects. This civilization's technology would be indistinguishable from magic to us, existing on a level so advanced that they could manipulate the quantum field itself. They might even transcend physical existence entirely, becoming beings of pure energy or consciousness that move through dimensions and realities with ease. Communication across the universe would be instantaneous, as they would be able to manipulate quantum entanglement or perhaps even communicate outside of time itself. A Type IV civilization would not just be powerful in a physical sense, they would likely be on a level of intelligence and consciousness that we can't even begin to fathom. With such mastery over the universe, their very concept of life, existence, and reality might be completely different from anything we can imagine. For them, the universe would be their playground, and the rules that govern it would be theirs to rewrite. Just when you think a Type IV civilization, with its ability to harness the entire universe's energy and manipulate the fabric of reality itself, is the highest achievement, there's another possibility that pushes the boundaries even further – a Type V civilization. While Type IV civilizations may dominate their universe, a Type V civilization would transcend universes entirely, mastering not just one, but the multiverse. A Type V civilization would have the ability to move between parallel universes, bending the rules of each to their will. They wouldn't be limited by the physical laws of any single universe. They could navigate through different realities where the laws of physics, time, and space might be entirely different. Their mastery would extend to creating and destroying universes, with the knowledge and power to engineer entire realities from scratch. The energy sources for such a civilization wouldn't just come from stars or galaxies. They would tap into the very structure of existence itself, manipulating the multiversal web to harvest energy from multiple dimensions. In essence, they would play the role of architects of existence. They could influence the timelines of countless universes, potentially creating and controlling entire civilizations within them, a Type VI civilization would operate at a level where they not only create and destroy universes, but also influence the underlying fabric of all existence. They would exist outside of time and space, with the ability to reshape the very laws of reality across all planes of existence. Their knowledge would surpass even the multiverse, giving them insight into the origins of reality itself. These beings might interact with what we think of as higher dimensional realms, perhaps even shaping new forms of existence beyond our understanding. For a Type VI civilization, concepts like life, death, time, and space are entirely malleable. They wouldn't just create or manipulate universes, they would define what it means for a universe to exist. The entirety of existence, in all its dimensions and forms, would be within their grasp. At this point, their capabilities would be so far beyond anything we can imagine that they might seem indistinguishable from gods, with the power to craft or unravel the very fabric of all realities. Even as a Type VI civilization holds the power to control and manipulate the entire fabric of existence, there remains the idea of a Type VII civilization, a step so unimaginable it stretches beyond the boundaries of our wildest theories. A Type VII civilization wouldn't just control universes or the multiverse, they would have mastery over all possible realities, dimensions, and states of existence, including those we cannot even conceive. They would exist in realms where the very concept of existence and non-existence is fluid, transcending the known and unknown. Their power would not only allow them to create and destroy realities, but to define what existence means at the most fundamental level, altering the very principles that govern reality across all spectrums. At this point, a Type VII civilization would operate outside any constraints of physical or metaphysical limits. They could manipulate energy, 
matter, time, and consciousness, not just in familiar ways, but in ways that completely escape human understanding. They could rewrite the rules of existence, creating new laws of physics or abolishing them entirely. They would have the ability to create entire multiverses with specific tailored realities or dissolve them into nothingness. Time would no longer be linear or cyclical, but something they could stretch, compress, or erase entirely. A Type 7 civilization would not only transcend godlike powers, they would redefine what power, existence, and reality even mean. They would move through all forms of existence and beyond, as effortlessly as we breathe, truly becoming infinite and eternal in every possible sense. As we climb the Kardashev scale from Type 1 upward, we move from what we can understand to something almost godlike. For instance, it's easy to imagine using huge satellites in space to collect solar energy and send it down to Earth. That's what could make us a Type 1 civilization. But building something like a Dyson Sphere, which would need entire planets to be broken down for resources, takes a completely different level of power. How long would it take for us to reach that level? And how much would we need to change to get there? By the time we talk about Type 3 civilizations, we're imagining beings that can shape whole galaxies like gods. This is why the Kardashev scale is more than just a tool for finding signs of advanced technology. It's also a way to stretch our imagination about what might be possible. When thinking about the future across thousands of years, our minds can struggle to grasp it. So we need these kinds of scales to help guide our thoughts. It's a way to glimpse what life might become, what we might become, once we start pushing the boundaries of space, time, and what's truly possible. Achieving the heights of a Type 7 civilization would require humans to overcome challenges that seem impossible by today's standards. First, we would need to master our planet's energy, then expand to harness the power of our star and beyond. Each step would demand radical advances in technology, intelligence, and perhaps even our biology. We'd need to survive for millions of years, avoid self-destruction, and evolve beyond the limitations of our current understanding of physics. The difficulty lies in more than just technology. It's about how we handle the vast social, environmental, and ethical shifts that would come with such power. Our current issues, war, resource depletion, and environmental destruction, show that humanity often struggles with even small-scale challenges. If we can't manage our own planet, how can we manage the cosmos? The path to a Type 7 civilization requires not only technological breakthroughs, but also an evolution in our collective mindset, where cooperation and sustainability become second nature.